Testing, testing. Hi guys. So, um, I decided to try something different. Usually I would just do voiceover uh, on a recording device. You know, I thought I could probably do an hour and live stream it on YouTube, see what happens. Maybe I'll be more fun because I always do it just via recording app. So maybe, you know, I can have some fun reading comments while I paint for the first one hour. So obviously I can't really draw anything other than a portrait or like basically the headshot or the characters fully clothed because YouTube is even more strict than Twitter and all the other social media. So we're going to be working on oh my gosh i don't want to pronounce her name wrong but yao miko Ma yao miko yes so i'm just gonna be drawing her portrait basically and uh once she's released then i can draw something a bit more uh elaborate so yeah for now we'll just keep it simple okay so let's get Let's start with a sketch. So usually I don't record this part, but first, first, uh, first, I gotta visualize, kind of see what kind of um, composition I want to go for. But usually the sketch is pretty much there as a guide. It's not really. Uh, doesn't really go into the final piece. Hmm, I'm trying to think like what, like how how I want to do this. Do I want to do like more of an anime style or more as a semi-realistic style, which I've been doing recently. So this is actually my first time live streaming on YouTube, so it's a little. Uh, It's a little new for me, so I uh, apologize if it's kind of weird because I've seen other people live stream on YouTube and this is a little bit unprofessional, I would say. <laughs> um, but the point of it is just to see what, let's see what happens. So she's got a lot of details on her arm. I'm just going to... play around with the positioning of the character and stuff yeah hopefully it doesn't lag too much Gosh, sorry guys, I... Uh, okay. Let me have a look at the chats. So, um, the video... I'm not sure if I will keep it up, but most likely. Uh, let's see. Is the progress you've made equal to patient guides? Yeah, this is basically what I do. And it's not exactly guides, I just narrate what I do and give some tips while I do it um, I'll be doing like one third of the process on YouTube and the rest of it will be available on patreon well you don't have to wish to be able to draw like me you can get there through hard work and practice I think it, pretty much anybody can if they uh, make a plan out of it and go for it. I think I was there one day. I mean, I was I was in your place as well when I first just started. You know, I see other artists painting and I was like, oh, so cool. You know, I watch, an well, mostly anime and I was like, oh, I really want to draw Sailor Moon. So I just started, obviously. It wasn't that great, but, you know, I kept trying. 
throughout the years. Okay, maybe, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'll be honest, the streaming is pretty distracting. Usually I'd probably be able to focus a bit more, but streaming while painting is pretty distracting. <laughs> Maybe I'll just have her arm like here. This is like one of my go-to poses. Yes, I use the same pose. It's okay though. Because the end result is what matters. You know, we can have the same pose for several characters, but if we put them in different lighting and angles, all that matters is the end result. Get the We need to get the right mood for the character. So after I do the sketch, this is basically what I do. And you'll see this as well in my older process. Basically, I'm just blocking in the character. How do I keep being inspired to draw every day? Well, it's pretty hard, but I mean, if I see a really cool movie or play a really cool game that that's pretty inspirational, I usually get inspired by that. Also the pressure to, uh, to kind of put out better work because, you know, that's what people expect of me. Yeah, artists don't want to admit this, but it is what it is. It's kind of like a full-time job, job for me too, so yeah, there's... I can't just... Uh, I have to do whatever I can to stay inspired because it is I need to I need to put out good work and I try to um, be as creative as I can whoops let's go ahead and name this face so next um, it helps to uh, name the layers the hair usually I also have it on a separate layer because Sometimes, especially with uh, more stylized characters, uh, we don't always get the first, the, the hair always on the first try. Sometimes it requires a lot of editing for the hair. So hair on a separate layer is always a good idea. And I even take it a step further. I basically have uh, put the back hair in a separate layer. That way it's even more uh, flexible when you want to edit stuff and you and then have the hair ornaments on the third layer. I'm just gonna roughly like uh, use the lasso tool to roughly shape it out not super clean on this either and always helps to have the reference right next to right next to you so it's just right there sometimes I mean you know some artists me included I have a secondary screen having the reference there is good but sometimes turn, just turning your head is just too much work, so. Alright, so I got the general shape for the character pretty much blocked in. One more thing, uh, I need to do the hand. Same thing, shape, just gonna go ahead and carve out the shape. You should take a break from draw drawing if you're feeling worn out. Yeah, I do. I do, but uh, uh, sometimes when I take too much of a break, I feel myself slipping like I need to get back into it because it's kind of like a feeling you get, uh, at least for me. If I start taking too much of a break, then I kind of get a bit lazier. So I try not to slip into that. Even now I feel like it. 
I I took a bit of a break this month and it was good until I was like, oh no, I'm procrastinating now. Now I have to get back into it. But that's uh that's just me knowing how I am. Let's see. Uh, and the background layer. I have this is the character group background group and steps group steps I usually include this background and the reference right on top all right hopefully I can achieve what I hope but yes after I blocking everything usually I would have a background uh, and the background is basically like a bunch of photo stocks that I put together I rarely paint the background because it you know I I have a specific idea in mind in mind for the background and it's gonna take a long time if I paint it manually so usually stick with a photo background and paint over that 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 will uh, be a lot faster usually so she's gonna be pinkish in t uh, theme, so... I mean, blue and pink, or turquoise and pink, is usually a good match. That's like my favorite color combo, so we'll go with that. But the background will probably be something different after. I'll most likely find some uh, photo reference for that. Or not reference photos, photo stock. Alrighty. Um, I'm just looking at the time. I think we sh I will probably stop the streaming at around 5:40 or or six and finish, finish it uh, tonight and uh, yeah so I'm gonna start off by just roughly roughly blocking out sort of like her clothing, skin tone and stuff like that and that's the best thing about having the reference right there you can just pick up the color and kind of just use it. I'll have to block in the layer where it's going to be colored outside. Oh. Oh gosh. Sorry guys, I'm really not paying attention to the chat too much. Uh, let's go back. I want to try painting like you in Procreate. Oh. Uh, I have, I'm not super familiar with Procreate, but uh, I think it's doable. I've seen some really, really amazing piece of art drawn by other artists. But uh, I think I tried it once. It's definitely a little harder to get used to because it is on a, like a iPad or a tablet device instead of a computer slash antique. Let's go ahead and paint all that. Ooh, awesome! I got my first super chat. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, there's some, I mean, other comments in, I'm not sure this language? Uh. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I can't read it. But uh, as for the super chat, thank you. Uh, thanks, Doom at Dusk, for the first. Oh wow, you like my Tatsumaki piece? Thank you. That was yeah. That took quite a bit to paint. Actually, it was a tricky angle. I hope to be at your level drawing one day. Yes, I think it's definitely possible. With uh, with the right practice and uh, proper referencing as well. Ah, you guys are so distracting. All right, let me get back to it. So I'm just 
the trying to read all the comments let me see if i can um this will probably be on youtube later yes do you go to your reference picture layer to get the color you don't uh you actually don't even need to switch layers you just use the eyedrop tool and uh pick the color like that but yes reference picture is pretty good for color if you're if you're uh, in need of inspiration or just trying to get a new uh, color palette and stuff like that all right so man this is I have to say this is a little distracting yes the live streaming is still kind of distracting <laughs> I'm usually a little faster than this okay let's speed things up here I'm just gonna do a bit of uh, adding some shadows here and there on the character since I've kind of got an okay base to work with a little messy but we got the basic colors and stuff so as for the face I'm thinking the the face is gonna be tilted so her face will most likely be in shadow And as for the hair, only the top will kind of get the, the lighting. And last but not least, go to the hand. Just gonna color the hand in. Alrighty. I'm just going to resize this a bit. So now comes the part where kind of, uh, you can kind of rotate the character a little bit, you know? Sometimes you you want to change up the, the angle of this as well. And you can do that easily if you put the character in one single group and all the other parts of the character in different layers, you can kind of adjust them separately so now you know the lines are pretty much useless so at this point we start slowly removing the lines uh, but you know there's a different feel about it if you do keep the lines so it depends on what type of style you're going for I personally I I just can't I'm not good with dealing with lines Alright, so if you look at this screenshot of the character, uh, the white clothing is actually a bit more pink in tone. Let's go back here. I'm just trying to... Um, refine it a bit more and maybe even change up the pose a bit too so the the line art in the end is sometimes it's kind of like why did I even do like make a sketch for it because I usually end up completely changing the composition of the characters um, but yes this is the part where I start pretty much uh, to call the pretty much experimenting change up the character a little bit move the limbs in a few positions see what works Sometimes I might stumble upon randomly like a happy mistake or something. Is that what they call it? Bob Ross? A happy accident? Yeah. Just kind of move around the character until, oh hey, this actually looks pretty good. And basically sticking with that. I'm gonna uh, remove the hand. Ok, 
Okay, let's... Oh, same, I'm not sure why. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Psychor. So basically, I'll just work on her, uh, what's it called, um, basically the shirt, her, her arms and stuff. I'm not gonna be adding in the accessories just yet because uh, those typically, I like to put them on separate layers because I can move them around, you know, play around with the placement and stuff like that. I'm just gonna select her head so this is when you can kind of be a bit more creative and kind of rotate the head <laughs> you know sometimes you can make some really funny have some have a bit of a laugh you know rotate her head all the way like she's possessed okay let's rotate it back so yeah this is the advantage of having the layers separately I used to paint the head in one single layer and it was really really uh, difficult to edit and after that I was like if I'm gonna spend like two hours editing the, the head and cutting it up anyways I might as well have have them on separate layers so now the hair gets their own separate layer the face gets their own separate Okay, so um, I'm gonna go go ahead and have a tiny bit of light source on the face. Possession, yes. <laughs> ah, got another super chat. Thank you. Ah, oh, cannot do booba window no more. Ah, uh, super chat from Jam Mac. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm honored that for your uh, title on me. <laughs> uh, just trying to be like you. I'm sure you can do it. It does take time and practice, but I think you can do it. Anybody can. Ah, but the main challenge is the motivation, I have to say. Yeah, that is one challenging part. Uh, but everybody takes... Um, Every artist have their own path, basically. And uh, one interesting story is that in college, in college, uh, I already knew how to digital paint someone. But in college, there was this one guy. He was super talented, and this guy never used Photoshop. But I, I could see the potential in him. He was so good. He had so much potential though you know his path he chose to pursue another thing that was not drawing but i was like wow okay i guess each artist have their own path to follow so i'm not sure what, where i was going with that but yeah i think everybody also takes different time to to improve as well i've seen some some artists just they evolve so fast. It's very impressive. I'm kind of envious because I had to... Well... I suppose I shouldn't say... But I was really envious. It's okay to be envious of other people and how much they improve, right? <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, very talented. So, uh, but I believe with hard work and uh, the right practice and reference, I think you can definitely achieve it. Maybe it'll take a little longer, but I think in the end, in the end, we will all be mostly in the same, same level. Cause you, you, you can't, I mean, there's always room for improvement. So technically, you know, 
I guess anybody can be better than anybody. It just depends on if you are willing to continue, like evolving in a way. Already, oh, I'm so sorry. There's some uh, comments that is in another language that I cannot, I can't understand. But thank you, I appreciate it. I think it's Spanish. <laughs> yes. Uh, Clarina Diaz, yes. Everybody definitely has their own style. Yeah, that is true. That is life. Some, some artists definitely takes a bit more time but they will get there they will definitely get there and you know what I think I think if you're smart about it you can get there a lot faster too because uh, I remember when I just first started uh, I don't think I was practicing in a very smart way I didn't use a lot of reference oh man I didn't use a lot of reference and I was kind of just painting blindly or testing blindly. Like uh, my first art program was definitely Photoshop. Although I disliked it quite a bit because I was basically doing it blindly. But once I came back to it, I learned a bit more than I was. I liked it much more because then I actually follow some tutorials that taught me you know some more efficient ways of painting so yeah proper guidance probably pretty important too but guidance without practice is kind of useless too you have to definitely have to put it into practice because you know you can you can theoretically know everything but if you don't try it out then I don't think it's very effective. But the, the, the most fun is to be able to experiment. Once you know how to work a uh, art program, experimenting is the best way to learn. Because then you can experiment with color, you know. What's your favorite color to work with? what the best way of painting and stuff like that so yeah this this phase have the eyes on a separate layer so you know so that you can go back and kind of move it let's go ahead It like that but first I need to create another window and put on my secondary screen okay the truth Clary Cl Clarina Diaz sorry if I pronounce your name wrong the truth for my drawing I only use as three brushes side of paint tool oh I know that program Almost I do not use many brushes, but creating them is incredible. Sometimes the simpler your setup, the better. For example, I basically work with the round brush on Photoshop, the airbrush, and the lasso tool. Those are only three tools. But if you are able to master like a few tools and you can use them very efficiently, that's pretty good. Uh, but, you know, testing out different brushes isn't a bad idea either um, you know sometimes I wish I kind of experimented with more brushes but yeah I've been I've been really used to these three tools and I've just been using these and that's it sometimes I, I'll maybe use a fourth brush or a third brush uh, there's definitely an appeal to just sticking with a few tools because you can master them. And this is basically first level, <laughs> my first level for the face. This is like maybe 20% done because 
this is not it. But yeah, we'll just get like a rough look going after merge down and then I start to basically basically drag the face around a bit here and there. Drag the face around here and there. Uh, play around with the facial proportions. I'm going to make the head just a bit smaller. Probably changing, gonna change her expression too, because it this is not. It's not uh, the the right vibe for her face. She's a bit more regal with her um, eye makeup and appearance. So I'll probably play around with that. And she's got more of a cat eye. Uh, but I just um, do a kind of a fast job with the eyes and the face. Just as a placeholder, you could say. Because usually the end result looks nothing like what I have initially. So gradually, I will be kind of editing the face here and there, maybe changing the eye angle, stuff like that. And you'll probably, some of you will probably make a joke about that because I think that's the main thing people commented on, like how, how much times I change faces and the pose of the hands and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of that. I wish I was as uh, good at just, you know, get getting the head and the hand out in the first try, but no, sadly, I don't know. I guess it has to do with my sketch. My sketch usually is quite messy, so yeah. So yes, the initial <laughs> version of the character is quite, uh, it's not the best, um, but you know, I kind of just keep on at it, focus on uh, each area a bit at a time. But yeah, this is maybe 10% done. And yeah, the streaming is a definite little bit distracting too, because I do, uh, I definitely work a little faster without having to talk and stuff. And you know, there is a little bit of pressure, I'll be honest, streaming it. It's kind of like the equivalent of someone watching over your shoulder. But it's okay. Alright, looking back at my small preview too here, is also quite helpful for you guys to always refer back to the small screen small preview and another thing uh, always kind of rotate your canvas every maybe 10 to 30 minutes and um, after you rotate usually you tend to see some mistakes that you might have might not have seen um, when it was on the other side she looks a little grumpy. We'll have to fix that expression later. Alrighty, so that is done. Next thing I'm going to do is... We're going to go ahead and I'm going to think about the shadow. So I'm thinking... We're going to adjust the shading a bit more. So I selected those areas that I want to have them a little darker. And in addition, you can also adjust uh, the color for that shadow. I want to be a little more subtle. And also um, I'm going to control T 
transform and warp warp this and I'm going to let's play around with the chest yeah it might look a little crazy but but all I need is to feel feel that it's going in the right direction like I'm looking at the small preview and I want to see well, maybe that might be too much. I just want to get the vibe. Sometimes you just have to feel that it's going the right direction. Sometimes you have to f use your gut instinct as an artist. It's kind of illogical. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you just have to feel it. And move it around maybe even. Uh, this shoulder probably needs to be a little bit more. I have a bit more room here. After I rotate, I rotate the character. I'm just going to like basically rearrange the character a bit. <laughs> or maybe like this? Actually, hmm. Okay, let's remove this. Let's rotate her a little, you know, we could have like a interesting Dutch angle. Dutch angle is basically the, the canvas is a little bit rotated, like more than 30 degrees, I think. That was, I think that's what the teacher said when I was still in college. And he was like, you know, if you want to make your composition more dynamic, you use a bit of Dutch angle in your composition. Yes, that's basically it. Ah, uh, you know what? This is not too bad. But will it still feel that way if I rotate it? Hmm. I'm going to... Okay, let me just try something real quick. How would it look if I ro flip her head? Um. Oh, hold on. Let me bring up the shoulder real quick. Let's see how that looks. So I basically changed her pose. Bring the arm up. Bring the face. Hmm. Oh, hold on. I missed the face layer. Let's go with this. So yeah, I do I do this a lot. Like basically rearranging the character. Uh, I think I missed a super chat. I have to go back up. Oh, Kor Korin Suke, thank you for the super chat, chat, and it's a thumbs up. Thank you. How uh, Del Nadius says, how do you find doing animation? Yeah, it's pretty fun. I used well, I I have prior experience in animation. I was in. 3D animation, which is a little bit different than 2D animation, but it did ta teach me uh, like rules of animation, uh, like you know the secondary motion and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of, a lot of good tips. But it's uh, it's fun. It's definitely fun. I think this could work if I change her expression because <laughs> right now it does not fit the pose. Ramsey says, what I've learned all these years is that you need patience until you're satisfied 
with your art pieces. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, sadly, you know, sometimes I'm very picky, so I end up overworking the piece too. But uh, in most cases, you do get more practice in because you're so not satisfied with your piece that you keep trying. But you end up with more practice. So the lighting did change because I flipped her face. So uh, what I shall do now, take the hair layer, let's go back to her reference, take the hair layer, and we're going to re-add lighting into the character. Let's go ahead, give her face a pop of highlight because the lighting is mostly coming from this side and uh, let's go ahead give her a bit of rim light on this side of the face go back to the body and do the same it over so I'm adjusting the torso now let's go ahead add Push or warp, warp that. I don't know, might be too much, but 
yeah, I was like, hmm, she's kind of tilted that way already. Sometimes, you know, we gotta test out. Maybe I should push it a little more. Well, sometimes it's not always the case. That's why we try it out, and if it doesn't work, then you can undo. But uh, one must never, you know, let an opportunity to see if it'll look better go. So we gotta try everything we can. Okay, there's lots of comments. Um, let me just uh, scroll up a little and read a bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh Sujeto Delta. 101 says, Always thought the art pros just bust both both poses and details and render materials out of thin air with nothing but their imagination. Well, I think that actually applies to some artists. Some artists are definitely like that. You know, but for me, I'm more of a... I start off rough, and I... Most of my process is rough. Yeah. But I think if you start out with a clean sketch, you have more chance of being able to do what you just described. <laughs> so, um, oh, Kai said lately I've been hating my art. I mean, I'm still drawing, but I'm not comfortable with the way it looks. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that, Kai. I think it's pretty normal for artists and for any creatives to at at points just hating your own stuff. Like I feel like that all the time. But, you know, sometimes that just means that you're you're like getting ready to reach the next level. <laughs> That's how I see it. That's usually how how it is. Like when you're feeling uncomfortable about your art and you think that it's not as good as you want it to be, Usually that means it's time to improve and you have, that's when you can improve. Because when you're like, when you're super confident about your art and you know, you're happy with how it is, then the chances for improvement is not very high compared to when you're not happy with your art. Like you know something's wrong. So in a way you can, look at it as a good thing alrighty now on to the background hair layer we'll just make some broad broad highlights I rotate the character a little. I'm not sure. Just trying to see how it would look. And maybe the hmm, the hand could probably be in a different position, but yeah. That's why it's on a different layer, so you know, in case I'm not sure about it. Alright, let me just fill in the rest of the hair. I think what I'll do for the hair is have it swing a little, overlapping the character. I think there's room for that. I'm going to warp the back layer. So we can bring the hair over a bit. Like that. So 
that the hair can overlap the character. So this is just a rough idea of what I think that I can do and it might look good. So we'll just put that on a separate layer back to the character now. even know what to do with this hand I guess I'll just have it straight and as for the head I'll be working on it a bit more so I can kind of test test it out you know see maybe the head needs to be bigger slash smaller sometimes that too, gotta size, resize the head and stuff. Flip the character. Well, the face, well, the eyes probably change directions a bit um, since the angle the angle well the angle of the head if she's looking at us it might be a little bit like other options might be better Let's see pretty purple eyes I'll just take purple She looks a little serious. I'm going to uh, make her eyebrows a little bit more softer. <laughs> Give her a little more of an arch eyebrows. Makes the face a little less stern. open mouth uh, okay the face is better but still still I think needs a bit more of something and that's something I need to figure out by playing around with, with the face a bit more <laughs> and also by playing around with the placement of the hair and whatnot it's just a lot of like moving things around now let's take a look at some comments now okay I'm just kind of scroll scrolling randomly. Jessica says, it's interesting to see your process. Thank you so much. No problem. My process is pretty messy, but I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, this says, it always takes me forever to do highly detailed work. It does take a long time, but I think the faster you, uh, you do them, the faster you get and also use photo textures that will that will make your process a lot faster uh cookie cookie bunny says do you have a specific specific process when starting new projects or is it freestyle approach it uh this is usually my approach it i guess you you can say it's freestyle it's pretty rough Missouri says, do you use hard edge brush or soft edge brush while painting? I use a combination of both. Soft to blend and hard to um, shape. Shape the shading and stuff. Alrighty, back to drawing now.
Okay guys, so I think it's been an hour since I started. So the rest of this process, voiceover process, will be available on my Patreon for the student tier. Um, but this video will most likely stay up. If it doesn't, then I mean I'm already I'm I'll at least keep it up for like a day or two. Um, but most likely it'll be up. So yeah, thank you for joining my live stream. It's a little new. Hopefully I can kind of streamline this and make it a bit more uh, clean. <laughs> it's pretty rough right now. I'm just kind of trying it out and stuff. But yes, I might also do members only live stream for spicier content because I can say that I could probably only do one one piece out of like six or eight pieces I do per month because of, you know, how spicy it is. For sure, I'm going to get banned by YouTube. Um, but yes, I will probably do members only spicier streams but yeah i will see you guys in the next voiceover if i do any more of these portrait style ones with fully closed character i'll hop on youtube again and if you guys want to see like my process you can just check out my other videos on youtube um my process is basically didn't really change since my first hinata uh painting process back in I think it was a few years ago too and it's basically the same process but yeah thank you guys for joining I will see you guys in the next one have a great day